Good morning, everybody. I'll be talking about uh, sex CT in thyroid cancer. As you know, thyroid cancer, the commonest is the papillary thyroid, followed by uh, follicular, and there's Herschel cell group and medullary and anaplastic uh, types of carcinoid, I mean, uh, thyroid cancers. The five year survival rate for well differentiated thyroid cancer is around 99% if it's localized, and if it's got regional metastasis, which we're dividing, is again 97%. And if you have uh, tumors with distant metastasis, it goes approximately around 57 to 60 percent. Management of thyroid cancer, cervical node metastasis is found in about 20 to 50 percent of patients, and good surgical resection is important to have a positive outcome. Residual metastatic li lymph nodes are the most uh, commonest sites for recurrence and also for residual disease. So what are the aims of uh, radioactive treatment is to destroy the remnant thyroid tissue and also to treat the local, regional or distant metastasis. And of course, we uh, follow them for lifelong with uh, thyroid globulin. But immediate period, we follow them with whole body planar uh, scan imaging. That's the current uh, practice. Coming to the role of SPECT-CT in pre-ablation, uh, the study from Imperial group in the UK and uh, they reviewed 79 patients who had scans with uh, IDEN 1, 2, 3. And in fact, SPECT-CT provided additional diagnostic information in approximately about 40% of patients and further characterization in 70% of uh, lesions seen on the planar imaging. So in the end, uh, what they decided was spect provided improved specificity with a characterized sensitivity of 50% of 100 and accuracy of approximately about 87 percent. So SPECT-CT did made an impact for all these equivocal lesions seen on the uh, whole body scan. Another patient from uh, SPANU et al. and they reviewed 117 patients who had uh, planar whole body bone scan SPECT-CT and they also had a few patients who had post therapy iodine 131 scans and in their uh, study in fact uh, having SPECT-CT in the algorithm changed the treatment approach in about 36 percent of patients with the disease and in fact uh, avoided unnecessary iodine treatment in 20% of patients who had no disease on the SPECT-CT component. Another study from Wong et al, uh, looking at the incremental value of uh, diagnostic uh, 131 SPECT-CT and in fact uh, they said they could rapidly exclude uh, the physiological activity or contamination uh, on the equivocal planar scans and also it improved the reader confidence in approximately about 71% of the patients. Therefore. SPECT-CT was used in uh, all those patients to differentiate uh, benign uh, uptake from pathological uptake. This is an example of a patient uh, with pre, I mean post-surgical uh, aspects. There is uptake in the neck and the increased uptake localizes to a level 4 cervical lymph node. It's quite straightforward. But in post uh, ablation scans, it becomes quite challenging. So what is the role of SPECT-CT in patients uh, after treatment with radioiodine? It improves the diagnostic information by providing uh, good nodal staging, disease localization, and also helps in change in therapeutic strategy. In this paper, they looked at 25 patients and SPECT-CT improved diagnostic interpretation compared to the planar in 45% of patients, which led to change in management in about 25%. Means sometimes we see an uptake in the neck and the, uh, the question is whether it is in the thyroid bed or it is in the esophagus and most of the times it will be the esophagus and therefore the patient will not get a further radioiodine treatment during follow-up. Another patient, uh, this is from uh, Haifa, looked at 71 patients and 54 patients had post-therapy imaging and 70 had diagnostic scans and in fact SPECT-CT provided 57% incremental value when compared to the planar imaging and 70 17 patients who underwent the diagnostic studies, the finding changed management in 40% of the patients, whether to have a higher dose or to refrain from radioactive treatment or to change the therapeutic actual. They can at least upstage or downstage the disease by using SPECT-CT. In this, again, uh, looking at 55 patients post-therapy, 29% uh, of the patients had indemnated results on the planar scans, and by using SPECT-CT, they could exclude nearly 22% of what was indeterminate on the planar and they could make a <coughs> definitive diagnosis in most of the patients. This is the last of the thing and SPECT-CT accurately characterized. If you want to look in terms of characterization and we can characterize all the inconclusive findings on the planar imaging, 
especially the contamination or bone metastasis or any other lymph node metastasis easily on the spec CT and by using spec CT they could alter the management in approximately 50 percent of patients. So spec CT is a uh, mainstay in thyroid imaging now and uh, most of the patients at least they'll have a spec CT of the head and neck or any specific areas whichever you find this equivocal. This coming to the increased uh, diagnostic information this is an interesting scan this is a whole body scan they have taken there is a focal uptake in the left side of the neck and they thought it was uh, a lymph node uptake but on the spec CT component it was just an asymmetric submandibular gland which was a physiological uptake and then again there was a focal uptake in the thigh which was found to be uh, a soft tissue I inflammation and therefore they could exclude any remnant thyroid tissue in the neck. Coming to nodal staging, in fact by using spec CT you can change the nodal stage in approximately 35 percent of the patients and you can differentiate whether the uptake in the neck is in the thyroid bed or it is in the adjacent lymph nodes in the cervical region and sometimes what happens is because the uptake in the neck is so intense you can miss uh, small nodes very close to the uh, thyroid bed and therefore by using spec CT this paper from uh, Zui et al they confirmed that spec CT helps in accurately localizing and assessing the disease in and around the neck. There is another patient thyroid bed there is increased uptake the question there was whether it was in the remnant thyroid tissue or in the lymph node but on the spec CT you can see a large lymph node in the neck and the uptake localizes to the lymph node in the neck so it was a lymph node metastasis patient underwent resection and then they will have further follow up to see whether any leftover remnant tissue there. Another patient high risk papillary carcinoma treated with uh, radioiodine about 4.5 gigabacterials there is uptake in the mediastinum and finally the uptake was there is a lymph node if you could see it is an intense uptake there but you thought it was on the thyroid bed but reducing the intensity in that region going a little bit further they could find a small remnant lymph node a paratracheal lymph node which was very close to the uh, thyroid bed. Better disease localization in this case it is often it is mostly straightforward then the question comes whether you need to do spec CT in all the patients then it is up to the local protocol because in our department uh, if you have a straightforward one then you do not do it depending on the work list for the day and also the patients but in general if this is the case it was a straightforward there was uptake in the salivary glands and also in the thyroid bed straightforward residual uptake in the bed. This is another interesting scan a planar imaging shows a focal uptake in the lower neck and could be local recurrent but on the spec CT it localizes to a T3 bone metastasis as you can see what was thought to be a remnant thyroid tissue turned out to be bone metastasis on the MR as well as on the spec CT component. Now the patient scan looks relatively normal but on the spec CT component you can see all this uh, non avid lung nodules which is uh, quite frequent in patients with uh, thyroid cancer and also CT shows multiple nodules which is not very really active. So. There is another patient with lung and bone metastasis you can see multiple lung metastasis on the thyroid scan and also uh, bone metastasis here on the CT it correlates with extensive lung metastasis. Radiodin treatment uh, use of spec CT for better disease localization less equivocal results needs further imaging and in fact you can accurately localize the areas of increased uptake you can differentiate you know lung uptake skeletal uptake and the treatment uh, often changes and in fact we give a higher activity for all these patients. This is the same example lymph node this is another example where your whole body is normal but on the spec CT component or the CT component you can see multiple nodules which is not uh, very active avid. Change in therapeutic strategy in fact by using spec CT in the algorithm they could change the treatment management in about 20 percent uh, 25 percent of the patients some went for surgical management and change in the radiotherapy field in few patients and also the amount of activity whether you want to give a higher dose or a lower dose was decided based on the uh, spec CT study in this group of patients. So this is another patient post radiotherapy scan they see two focal areas of increased uptake on the spec CT component one localizes to the lymph nodes and other localizes I mean remnant thyroid tissue and then there was a lung metastasis in this patient. 
Now the patient looks a faint uptake, whereas on the spec CT, there is a remnant or a residual thyroid tissue, which helps with the clear cut uh, definition. Now there are similar examples if you want to just localize where the pathology is, because I'm showing quite, these are all quite just straightforward scans, but uh, later on I will show some technically challenging ones, whether uh, you want to say whether it's a remnant tissue or a thyroid or a esophageal activity. So the value of uh, spec CT in post therapy is accurate localization. You can characterize where the uptake is. You can differentiate malignant versus benign uptake, assessment of nodal or distal metastasis. And in fact, sometimes the f you see some faint uptake at uh, equivocal or unexpected sites. If you want to clarify, you need to have some additional imaging at the site. And you often come with some incidental findings, uh, which we often over report if you don't uh, know where, what are the common causes of uh, abnormal or a normal iodine uptake. Physiological mimics, uh, there are quite a lot of case reports where they could find uptake in the salivary glands, dental fillings, retrosternal goiter, esophageal activities, very frequently we see this. Hiatus hernia is another stumper which you can over report. Bowel diverticular can show increased uptake. Some patients have shown some breast uptake, skin contamination. All these things you have to take into consideration before you want to uh, send the patient off or whether you want to recommend a patient for a spec CT. This is a patient, you can see there's a linear uptake, which is quite straightforward, but if you want to know whether there is any remnant thyroid tissue there, it's quite challenging, especially if you have a uh, raised uh, thyroid globulin and if the patient has got a high risk and then spec CT might help in this patient. In this case, the whole of the entire activity is in the esophagus, not in the thyroid bed or any other structures in the mediastinum or the neck. Unusual metastatic lesions have been found. It can be found in the liver, kidney, central nervous system, rectus abdominis muscle and rectus spinae muscle also. So that has to be also thought into consideration. So all uptake outside the neck should not be taken lightly. It could be physiological or it could be pathological. So you need to exclude. So you need to have an other investigation. So the best thing is better to do a spec CT and exclude uh, the mimics and then confirm whether it is benign or pathology. Benign uptake, you also think in terms of cyst, bronchiectasis, thymus, stroma ovary and uterus in the menstruating women can also show increased uptake. I'll show some few examples. In this case, there is a uptake in the neck, which is remnant thyroid tissue, but what is the uptake in the mediastinum? Uh, we were not sure. This is one of our uh, early scans in 2007-2008, I think so. And then on the spec CT component, you can see it is just an esophageal uptake. So whatever was there, the disease was confined only to the neck and the uptake was the physiological because the patient had some dilatation in the distal esophagus and that was a ph physiological uptake. And also we found a uh, patient on the right side, there is some increased uptake. The uptake corresponds to your renal cyst. So by doing spec CT, you can clearly uh, say the uptake was in the renal cyst. And in this case, there is increased uptake here, and the uptake was in a higher hernia. So, all these things you can exclude and confidently say there is disease in the neck, or if there is disease elsewhere, or the others are physiological uptake. You need to have, if in doubt, I think so the best policy will be if you're not sure what is happening, the best thing is to do a spec CT in these patients. So, limitations is additional imaging time, but again, it takes uh, whether you want to do one bed position or a two bed position. You can decrease the scanning time. You can always modify the protocol according to the needs of the department. There is an additional radiation, but again, you can justify because you are going to do a better diagnosis uh, for a better outcome. Therefore, uh, a, a radiation dose approximately, they get extra is about three to five millisievert per bed position. So that's the extra additional. additional scanning time. As I said, you can always modify that patient discomfort. I don't think so. That's a major problem and uh, non id disease may not be detected, but if you detect and then the management changes according to the local protocol. So the role of spec CT in differentiated thyroid cancer, you have better nodal staging, you can differentiate physiological from pathological uptake, you can accurately localize the focus, identify radioiodine negative disease, and in fact the current evidence in the literature is it alters patient management in approximately a quarter of patients. Therefore, spec CT is useful in patients with thyroid cancer.